The conversation on race has taken quite a turn in the last couple of weeks as more racialized groups speak out about their lived experiences with systemic racism and challenges faced in society. The recent death of Chantel Moore allegedly at the hands of police in Edmonston, New Brunswick, the RCMP officer's assault on an Inuk van, the recent case of Chief Alan Adam being violently arrested by RCMP, and Rodney Levi's death just this past weekend has placed a magnifying glass on the issue of police brutality against members of Indigenous communities. Joining me today to talk about this issue is Susan Levi-Peters, a former chief of Il Sabuktuk, first female chief ever elected in that community, and Rodney Levi's cousin. Thanks for joining us today, Susan. Thank you for having me. First of all, our sympathies out to the loss of your cousin. Tell us about Rodney. What was he like? Who was he? Um, he was 48 years old. He was a very, very nice man, very kind. Uh, he lived in another First Nation about an hour and a half from here. His mother and his grandfather are originally from my community. So he has uh, families in two First Nations. So uh, he was a very nice man. And annually they have a, a trout tournament in that, in that First Nation. And everybody would go there, all the communities in Quebec and, and in New Brunswick. And, oh, he'd be there so happy to see us. And, you know, it's, he's, our fa he's our family. So he'd be happy. And any place, we would see him in town or whatever. And he'd come and say hi and give you a hug. And so he was a very, very nice, yeah, a very nice man. With, uh, he had three children. And um, he had some um, um, uh, mental health problems. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I guess he, he and he, um, he had, uh, he went to church to the pastor and he, that evening, that's, that's what happened. He went to, uh, he was invited for a barbecue and he went and, uh, and sometimes from what I'm told that, uh, if you know he would get paranoid sometimes or he would get uh, depressed and uh so, i guess something like that might have happened and uh, the cops were called uh, the rcmp were called to do like a wellness check and to just to have him um you know uh, give him proper care uh and they showed up and they said he had a knife and uh um but uh, one side is saying they, he did and the other is saying, so we ha really have to wait till the report is done. Um, but um, one thing they're saying is that um, before he was hit with a taser, that uh, the gun was not in his hand. He, let, he did uh, the gun, sorry, the, the knife, um, which was like a butter knife or something like that. Um, and he was not threatening anybody. Uh, the pastor himself had made a letter and posted on social media, uh, correcting it, saying that he was an invited guest uh, that evening because it, it, at first it was reported that he was breaking in or something like that. And so so they tasered hear... him. They yeah. tasered him and then they shot him. And uh, twice they shot him and it, they hit him in the heart. And he, from what we're told, he died instantly. Mm. Yeah. And so, Susan, when you hear of your cousin's death and the fact that he was struggling with mental illness, what are your thoughts as you're hearing now his death, so many other cases of Indigenous people mistreated by the police? How does this make you feel? Oh, it's, it, it's just... Uh, it's it hit home it hits home I uh, I, I was uh, arrested myself uh, wrongfully mm -hmm. for a $50 unpaid parking ticket I was told I I didn't have I was dragged out of my vehicle um, taken in taken given a mock shot and everything and uh, when my husband tried to intervene or ask what was going on the RCMP uh, unlashed his holster uh, to, like you know so um, and and I knew I didn't have an unpaid parking ticket because because I just renewed my license mm -hmm. that uh, and that only happened in 2012 and then just recently my daughter my oldest daughter our oldest daughter she she has uh, mental health problems too and we've done uh, wellness checks and uh, uh, at one point in time uh, about a year and a half ago um, the cops dragged her out out mm -hmm. of her apartment and only thing I could tell my son to do at the time was uh, uh, video it because if he intervened or anything he would have 
he would have ended up like my cousin or mm. you know or like Chantel and so it, it's it's very hard because you don't know who to trust because we also have um, First Nation people members uh, RCMP members that are First Nation that we know and yeah. that some are I have a family member uh, Rodney's family member our family member he's a member of the RCMP mm. so it's hard who do you trust or who do you go to and um but there is definitely needs to be a change something has to happen we cannot uh this this cannot continue to happen the world has started talking about this more um and so as people are starting to talk about the misuse of power by the rcmp uh police when it comes to indigenous communities black communities what do you hope the conversation moves to? As you're talking about something has to change, what needs to change in that conversation? There needs to be uh, more understanding of each other's culture, language. Uh, every, there's a lot of misunderstanding, like uh, for somebody might come in and say that, uh, uh, say something and uh, I would understand them as a native to native, but a non-native would misunderstand it. So, and it's because of language and culture, it's, you know, so there's a need to be a lot of that. That trust has to be rebuilt. Um, there needs to be more humanity. For one thing with the RCMP, um, they only go through six months training and then they're, then they're put on the street. We don't even know what kind of um, uh, background this person has. Uh, were they part of any any organization that, that was racist or anything like that? Or, you know, there, there needs to be more stricter vetting. And uh, one thing... Um, we used to do in my community maybe 10 years ago when we had we we had massive suicides at one point in time so what we did was uh when the when there was a wellness call uh the crisis worker would go along with the rcmp so there was no um you know they didn't have to because a lot of our people are very fearful of the rcmp and rightfully so we've been abused one too many times um, you know, and I think um, the mentality has to change of who we are as First Nation people. Right now, I think we're labeled as either we're terrorists or we're savages or we're something like that. And a lot of times we're very, um, we, we don't do no harm. We're very, in fact, in my community, we're very, very spiritual people, you know. So uh, even with all this abuse that we've been taking, uh, we still want um partnership or or something but we want uh we, we want the abuse to stop what is the relationship like when it comes to the police is there trust you know i think about Chantel moore's case and the fact that you know these officers were on a wellness visit so they were by all means checking on her well-being yes. and she ends up Killed. And of course, the, in, the investigation is still happening. So this is all alleged. But what is the relationship like when it comes to trust when it, and the police and your community? It's, it's, uh, it's not good. Right now, we, we, uh, when I was chief back in between 2004 and 2008, uh, we signed, uh, we brought in the RCMP. That was the first time ever we had an RCMP station uh, in our community. And uh, the commissioner at the time was uh, Commissioner Zaccarelli, and he gave me a, uh, a, a, a tobacco pouch. Uh, uh, it's uh, an RCMP pouch with an RCMP logo on it, symbol on it. And for us, uh, offering of tobacco is very sacred. It means, you know, there's a partnership. And he promised that we will work together for the betterment of our people. Everybody now is talking about the abuse that they went through on, in the hands of the, of the police force. So, and I, and I have empathy, um, but we also have to respect the law like not we cannot put all of them in one basket it's like um when for us as first nation people uh growing up it was always like one drunken indian made us all drunken indians mm. so we cannot two two wrongs does not make a right so the best thing is to to try to find a solution it's hard it's tough but with social media and talking about it more, bringing it out, and more people are out there 
are, are that are against it. There's more good people than bad people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was telling my daughter, like, you know, you, you, there's more good people than bad people. And you can't, we can't go beating up the whole um, uh, police force or the whole, you know, we, we can't go doing that or, or judging them, all of them because of, of, of a handful. But what we can do is bring it out and, and say that, you know, there's, like you said, it's now being brought out all over. It's too bad that our people had to die for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too bad uh, George had to die, Rodney had to die, Chantel had to die. But, but let's hope that there's no more of them that have to die. Oh, so well said. Thank you so much again, Susan, for your time. Again, our hearts, our prayers, our sympathies with you and your family as you grieve the loss of your cousin, and we are praying for a change as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing our story, mm -hmm. and thank you for having me, and I hope more of my people will, will speak up more. Hey, everyone. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and let us know what you think about today's topic right there in the comments.